Hey you guys, so this is just a like quick intro into this next video. Um, this is how I organize my graduate school applications. Um, materials basically um, I use Microsoft OneNote but you could basically do this system using Word with a bunch of folders if you like um, I just didn't because I'm like a pro OneNote person I don't know but that's how I did mine um, and hopefully this helps you organize your graduate school application things um, I've done a couple videos on this kind of before and I will link those down below and I think that's it. I think that's all I had to say. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it and see you guys in the next video. Peace. Okay, so this is how I organize my graduate school um, application things, but you can probably just as easily do this in Word. Um, and yeah, so the first page is this like done checklist. Um, I kind of, when I was going through the process, I realized I needed something to just give me an overview, something I can look at really quickly and see what still needed to be done, what was done and whatever. We'll come back to this page. I made some milestones for myself. So I, these are the dates I wanted to have everything done by. Like at the bottom you see pay all application fees. I wanted that to be done by Wednesday, November uh, 23rd. And so this was just estimates. No, I did not make all of these deadlines. I'm not going to lie to you because I just wanted the deadlines to sort of help me um, kind of keep on track with what I'm supposed to be doing for these applications. Also in here, I put my revised personal statement. Um, I just wanted that there as like a quick reference. Sorry, I clicked off of it. A quick reference just in case I needed it for something. I wanted to read what I wrote for a certain school, whatever. I wanted that in this folder as well. So then I have a page where the application links are. So I wanted a, I didn't really use this page that much, but it could be really helpful when you're beginning the process and you're going back and forth to the program's websites. It'd be good to have them all in one spot. So the next page is my application logins. I'm not gonna show you that because that's kind of weird because the passwords and stuff are there, but I made sure that I had all of the username and passwords for every application I had to do all in one spot and that's there. So for my program, I um, you it's it's recommended that you reach out to your mentor or potential advisor to see if they're accepting students or if they're going on sabbatical or something like that. You want to reach out and see if they are going to be um, able to, um, you know, admit you in the fall. So I changed the names of the mentors, but these are the schools I applied to on the website that says accepting, but then I made sure to go through and email them because sometimes the websites aren't up to date. And then if I got responses, I didn't really update this page because I did get some more responses, but whatever. You guys get the point. So the schools, mentor names, website status, email, and get your name. So that's that. Um, personal statements. So this page, I really wanted to make sure I was hitting all of the points that I needed to for each specific school's personal statement. So I made sure to go through the websites and put it all in one spot so that I can know exactly what I needed to put in the personal statement if they had specific requirements. Um, and this was really beneficial. So when I was ready to work on Penn State, I was able to just go to this page and be like, okay, this is what my personal statement should include. So next we have the letters of recommendation. Um, I actually didn't use this format. I made it in Excel to be able to send it to the teachers. Um, but basically the school's name, how you submit the letters of recommendation, the person's name, the people's name. So person one, person two, person three. And then if it was done, but I didn't really use this that much. Um, I mainly use the done checklist transcripts. So this is the next page. Um, I made sure to go through all the schools that I was applying to and then how they wanted my transcripts. So some schools want unofficial ones, some schools want them mailed. And so if they need to be mailed, I made sure to include the address. And then if it was done, 
I made sure, so I've been to three schools and I made sure to put check marks or yeses for each school that I've done, I've sent the transcripts for. So next is the GRE stuff. I made, I just wanted a quick reference list um, of the school codes. I mean, you might not need it because you can just look up the schools, but it's easier and faster if you just have the school codes to input on the GRE website. So next I have fees. Um, I basically did the same thing, but I didn't keep this because I did it in Excel. Um, and it's basically the same thing. So I have the application fee. I have the GRE fee. Like if it wasn't one of the four schools, I waived my, or I sent my scores for free. If it was $27 to send it, how much the transcripts were going to cost from Hampton, from Pitt, from Liberty total. And then if it was paid or not, but I ended up making this in Excel. So it was a lot easier to just sum it up at the end instead of me trying to add it in inaccurately. <laughs> So next we have um, the research interest per school. So when I reached out to the professors, I made sure to talk about how our research overlaps. So if somebody was interested in race, I'm also interested in race plus social economic status. And so I made sure to include that here. And so this was really beneficial for when I was tailoring my personal statements to each school and so basically I went back to this and I was like okay what did I say I was interested in based on what their um, research interests are and I made sure to include that in my personal statement. So next we have due dates. Um, most of the places were due December 1 but just in case some weren't I just wanted to make sure I had them just in case there was a hiccup or something had happened. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had all the due dates. And then this is a little paranoid of me. So I wrote down when the school was having interview dates so that I would know if I hadn't heard by then, that means I didn't get in. And that's basically what this page was, but I didn't really use it as you can see. I only have three schools there. So next we have this email I drafted to remind people about letters of recommendations. So this is when I was basically done um, and I sent out uh, just like a little reminder email saying, hey, applications are due in two weeks. Um, and I think, so this is, um, I applied to some MSW programs and these were their personal statement topics. Um, basically, yeah, that's what, that's what that is. And then Harvard's um, personal statement for their graduate school of education. And then I did a sample email um, to future professors, the people I reached out to, and I made sure that that was saved in here. And then also for my letters of recommendation, I saved that as well. So if you need it, well, I don't know if you would need help, but this is just so that I could have it all in one place. And if I need to send it to more people, I could just copy and paste it instead of trying to come up with the email thing all by myself. Okay, what I was basically wrapping up and saying is that doing this sort of put everything all in one spot and it just made everything super seamless for me. Like I didn't have to be looking everywhere. Where is this? Where is that? It was all in one spot. And I think that's what really helped me with the applications. So that is it. If you have any questions, be sure to comment down below and I will uh, respond if you have any questions about organizing um, your stuff so that you can be organized and submit and get accepted into graduate school. 